How's it going, everyone? Today we have AM Trades with us. He is a good friend of mine, and he has taught me many things that I've incorporated into my model. So AM, if you want to give us a quick introduction, and then we'll get started. Yeah, so obviously I'm happy to be here doing this and excited to talk about some topics that I think are super important. A little bit about myself. I trade futures on the indices market, focused just strictly on ES and NQ, with the majority of my trades taking place on NQ, since I find the price moves there are a little bit more exaggerated with larger ranges, which is favorable for my style of trading. Throughout the years, I've definitely found the most consistent edge with indices since there's a lot of really specific tendencies that can be taken advantage of that you don't really see anywhere else. But even though that's my focus, most of the things that I share are transferable to the Forex markets as well, which I know are super popular. So at the time that we have for this video, I wanna cover my process going into each new week and throughout the days of the week of how I'm establishing the narrative and how I'm determining which days I'm going to actually trade. Uh, for me and my personal system and in my trading, I'm strictly focused on large range trending days, uh, daily candles which look like this, 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 here. Ones when there was clearly a direction in price and it was low resistance and had intent to really go large in one direction. Uh, that is the main focus of my of my trading so that's something i want to cover here and i'm going to give you three steps including the economic calendar reading the daily chart and finally weekly range profiles so those are the the three main things that i use to establish narrative and that's prior to even considering looking for hourly confirmations that's prior to even thinking about an entry this is the number one thing that i'm doing and i want to give this to people because I feel like a lot of people may be missing this and it's something that once you pick it up, I think you'll be surprised about how the other pieces of your trading start to really fall into place. And if you can do this on a consistent basis, uh, it'll be extremely beneficial towards you. Uh, so that's going to be the focus. And I understand that there's going to be watching this video, plenty of people at, at different stages in their trading journey. There's going to be you know, people that are maybe profitable and you're just looking for some extra information. Maybe you just got into trading and you're trying to learn more or you're you're right on the edge of making it work and you're just looking for that that final piece to get you there. Uh, I understand there's, there's people of all different levels. So I'm gonna present the information in a way where it's really digestible for any trader. Uh, but I wanted you to understand that the things that I'm gonna share, you can go into immense detail through studying and experience that you know, there, there's more to it than, than I'll show you. Uh, I'm just going to give it to you in a way that can be logical for anyone and, and is in a more refined manner. With that said and out of the way, we can get into the actual fun part, which is talking about the process that I go through each week to establish the narrative, to determine which days to trade, looking for large ranges. Uh, using those three steps that I mentioned earlier, we're going to cover each of those. And I'm going to use just the last three weeks of price action because I think that's the most fair for an explanation like this. I won't choose a week where it seemed to work perfectly and then completely ignore another week where it appeared illogical. I just don't think that's fair. So we'll be using the week of March 11th, the week of March 4th, and the week of February 26th. And I'll also be explaining these in the context that I took a trade on it for the moves that I'm going to be covering. And that's because I actually did. Uh, I am assume not everyone's familiar with me. I do share executions on my Twitter of the trades I've taken, or at least ones where I think there's something of value to be learned. Uh, so you can check over there as I'm explaining it and kind of look through it there as well. So the first thing that I do going into each new week is looking at the layout of the economic calendar. And that's before looking at anything that has to do with price. This is the first step. And for me, what I'm looking at is what is this layout telling me about days that I can expect the most likely to have a large range daily candle? That is always going to be the main focus. So the economic calendar sets that initial expectation. Now with an expectation comes certain restrictions. That doesn't mean that on those days that I determine uh, the most likely to have a large range, that doesn't mean I'm gonna get a trade that day. I still need to look into the chart and get confirmation from price. One of the main errors that I see with certain people using the economic calendar is the assumption that it has this ability to predict the weekly profile or predict highs and lows of the week based on singling out certain high impact news events. And I think you're gonna find over time that that logic does not hold up on a consistent basis. It does not provide you with 
the actual logic that you're looking for. Now that's something that I do advise against uh, because high impact news or any of these news events are all affecting the market differently and can enter the market in an expansion. It can enter in a manipulation. It can enter and fall flat and just consolidate price. So these are things that you can't really predict ahead of time. You have to set that expectation and then go into the chart as it releases and then build that narrative on top of that. Now to break down what we're seeing here a little bit more in detail, obviously you can see that within this economic calendar, I have the filter set to only red folder news and obviously I'm an indices trader, so I'm only looking at USD red folder news. Uh, but these events, while they're all categorized the same under the impact, the actual significance that it's weighed into on the market, it varies depending on the event. So I categorize these each into high impact news, medium impact news, and low impact news. So the events that I consider high impact news are CPI, FOMC press conference, and non-farm payroll. For CPI, that's one that everyone is familiar with. It is you know, its own event. FOMC press conference, that's one that isn't going to occur too often, but that's not to be confused with FOMC minutes or anything that Powell has to do with. Those are separate events. FOMC press conference, they occur on Wednesdays within particular weeks when you see it. It'll be at 2.30 Eastern time, and it will usually have an event before that at two o'clock Eastern. And then non-farm payroll, that is usually the first Friday of each month, and I have a particular protocol for that when I have those events. And I believe the second example that we're gonna go over is a non-farm payroll week, so we will cover that as well. Now, with high impact news events, these three that I'm categorizing, I am saying it is high impact news in the context that they are events that hold enough significance in the market that they are going to be impacting the weekly range. So when I say that, you want to be really cautious on these events to avoid the days prior and really put a lot of significance on how that release um, affects the weekly range. And then we want to be really focused on trading the days after. So for medium impact news, I will usually classify that as GDP, PCE, PPI. Uh, those are the main ones. Usually they're going to be released at 830 Eastern time. And those are ones where you want to be more cautious within the daily range. So if I am looking for a trade on a day where there is PCE being released at 830, I will not be entering the market prior to that occurring within the daily range. And I don't want to be holding trades through that event because while they may not be significant enough to really have a large impact on the weekly range, it's enough that you want to be really cautious holding through these events because it can be large enough where you may be on the wrong side of it and you take a larger loss than, than you intended. So medium impact news, high impact news, those are two that you really don't wanna be holding any trades through. And of course, finally, there's low impact news and that's really anything else outside of that. These are events which a lot of times will occur at 10 a.m. Eastern or there's some of these others at 8.30 like unemployment claims where the effect isn't really significant enough to be concerned with either the weekly or the daily range. And it's something that I would consider holding through in certain scenarios, but these are kind of more bringing energy to price on an intraday basis and they don't hold that same relevance that I'm looking for in the high to medium impact news range. And now that you understand what those three levels consist of, I'll kind of show you how that applies to this layout in building the expectation of what days I'll be looking at price for large ranges. So obviously this is the first week that we're going to be going over Monday, February 26th to Friday, March 1st. I'm going to be asking myself first, is there any high impact news events within this week? Is there CPI, FOMC press conference, non-farm payroll? And obviously as we look through it, while they're all red folder, there is none of those specific high impact news events. So for me, that means there is no days that I'm going to put a restriction on for avoiding the days prior, right? Because there's no high impact news event within the week, which is gonna have that really big effect on the weekly range. So I can kind of operate more freely. But with that being said, I also like to mention that I do not trade Mondays. That is an indisputable thing for me. Uh, when you're looking at the weekly range, uh, there's a few reasons why I do this. The first is simply based on data. Monday is on average the smallest range day by under 25% of the average. 
And that could be for a few reasons. One, as we look at this economic calendar, one thing that may stick out to you is that there is no news at all on Monday and we can continue looking through. And Monday is not a day where there's going to be anything really significant in terms of news. So that's going to mean that it's always prior to something that's more significant, which leads it to be more accumulated or more manipulative, and it may run in opposing directions. Uh, another thing is that when you're trading weekly range profiles, Monday is a day that you have no data to reference back towards. You are trading a profile that is non-existent. So that means you are predicting based on nothing. So instead of that, Monday is a day I'm willing to sacrifice and completely let go. And I have no attachment to the price action that occurs on that day. It means nothing to me, but it's something that I look and I, I use and I look back on and say, what did Monday do? What is that telling me? about the following days. So I look back at it to give me a better idea of what the following days will be doing. So for this particular week, I'd be looking for trade opportunities on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday with the expectation that they would have a better chance for a larger range. But with that being said, that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to get trades on all those days or all those days are going to be large ranged. It's just that the economic calendar isn't really restricting me to want to avoid any particular day. But there's also something with that where if price is hard to read in that moment or you're conflicted, then you would look towards the next level, which is medium impact news. Where I'd be looking at Wednesday and Thursday, seeing those reactions of how those gave on the daily candle. I would be looking at that to add to the narrative if it was unclear. And you'll see an example of that when we get into looking at the daily chart. So now that we have the economic calendar framed for this particular week, I have the understanding that Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday are the days I'm setting an expectation to seek trade opportunities. I know that I'm going to look into the chart next on the daily time frame, and I want to be focused on the phases of price delivery. That is the main focus for the daily chart uh, for me personally. So I'd be looking at this with the understanding that the tendency of the daily chart is to go from an expansion into a new phase of price delivery before going into another expansion. So when I look at this chart going into the new week, I would say that the previous week closed in a large range. So I would be anticipating a new phase of price delivery before expanding again. So the new phase would either be expansion to retracement, expansion to reversal or expansion to consolidation. So those are the three different phases that I'd be looking for as an intermediary phase uh, in between the two expansions. And for me, like I said earlier, I'm only focused on large ranges. So when I have an understanding that the daily chart is in between those two expansions, this is where I almost hold back and I want to sit back and watch how these are printing on the chart and that's adding to the narrative. So I don't want to be eager in these moments to get on side with some new expansion because I understand that a new phase of price delivery is taking place and I have to trade according to that. So now that I'm aware of what's going on on the daily chart and that we're going into a new phase of price delivery into this new week, I can kind of walk through what I'd be looking for during each day and I refine this down to an hourly time frame to get a more detailed view on price. So like I mentioned earlier, I would be avoiding Monday's range. As we can see, it's small ranged. It's at a high and low. And I know this isn't a retracement. I know this isn't a reversal. So I'm letting it continue to play through. And here on Tuesday, I'm seeking trades in the AM session of New York, so around this 9 AM, 10 AM candle, and it put in a low, but failed to run this external low, so this would be an invalid trade for me, so I kind of let this play through. And even though we can see this run on this external low here, this is taking place during the PM session, so this is something that I completely avoid and I'd be waiting for the following day. As you can see, overnight we run down and kind of fade away. And again, like I mentioned, we would be referencing back to the economic calendar, so Wednesday and Thursday, we have those medium impact news events. So during consolidation where we're having these shallow runs and unconvincing returns back into the range, I know that manipulation should be very aggressive and fast and convincing. I'd be looking for these news events Wednesday and Thursday to confirm that manipulation in order to pair it with a weekly profile. So on Wednesday, when we have that 830 news event, there's nothing of significance to really pin off of. and. This would be another day I just have to let it go and Wednesday small range and just kind of fades away. So now my focus goes back towards Thursday, the next day. Can we see anything during that news release that gives me that final convincing run that we are 
confirming the manipulation of this consolidated range and can go into an expansion. So like I mentioned, going into Thursday, I would not be trading or holding any trades through the 830 news because it's medium impact. And I can see that overnight, we ran through this external low. And during this news event, we had this really convincing run right back into the range. And if I mark this out, we have a change in state of delivery on the hourly. So I know that this is my final confirmation that now we have actually manipulated the consolidation range and can look back to pair this with the weekly profile. So following this candle close here at 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. on Thursday, I can look back and say, well, we consolidated Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, reversed on Thursday. So this is a consolidation reversal weekly profile. And I can say anything after this is a confirmation to find a continuation Thursday and Friday. And if you are curious to see the executions on this trade, or maybe just to see a little bit more of the logic behind it, I share that all on Twitter as usual. I got an entry within this wick here following the change in state of delivery. I closed that out overnight. I got another entry at New York Open on Friday and got on side with this nice large range daily candle, all according to the weekly profile. Now we can move on to the second example, which is just going to be the following week. As you can see, it's Monday, March 4th to Friday, March 8th. And like I said, the first step going into each new week is looking at the layout of the economic calendar and more specifically first for high impact news events. And as I go down the list here, we can see non-farm payroll here on Friday. So my protocol for this is a bit different. Like I said before, I don't trade Monday. That's an indisputable thing for me. I look for potential opportunities on Tuesday and Wednesday. I avoid price the day before on Thursday, and I look for trades post NFP release on Friday. With that being said, but also considering that Tuesday and Wednesday are days prior to a high impact news event, obviously, which is non-farm payroll on Friday, I'm usually a bit more cautious to open trades on those days and only will if there's a really specific and convincing signature in price that I can actually get on side with. And if I don't have that, then it's really not in my favor to be opening trades on those days, as most of the opportunity is really going to exist on Friday following the release of non-farm payroll. With the economic calendar framed for the week, understanding that it's a non-farm payroll protocol, looking for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday for potential trade opportunities, I can now move over to the daily chart and start going over that second step, which is the phase of price delivery. The same exact idea as last time, we closed the previous week in a large range, so I'm looking for a new phase of price delivery, going from an expansion to a consolidation, an expansion to a retracement, or an expansion to a reversal, and never an expansion to another expansion. So I'm looking for either framework to get on side with a downside move, or just avoiding price, understanding that it may consolidate. Refining this down now to an hourly time frame. This is after I've already framed the economic calendar. I know which days I'm seeking potential trade opportunities, and I know on the daily chart which phase of price delivery we are trading off of and what we are coming into. So knowing that the previous week closed in a large range with expansive daily candles to the upside, I know if the opening days trade higher, I will avoid it because I won't trade an expansion to another expansion. If the opening days consolidate, I will avoid it. If the opening dates frame a manipulation for a reversal or a retracement, I will seek trades to the downside. What we had here in this week, obviously I don't trade on Monday, so I let that play through. If Monday manipulates, then I can expect an expansion to the downside on Tuesday, as that's a day I'm willing to trade based on the economic calendar, and it's in line with the daily phases of price delivery within that expectation. So going into Tuesday, I look back on Monday's range. Like I said, that's a day that I do not trade. So I'm using it as data for what the following days will do. And if we look here, this is the NQ chart. It doesn't look anything too significant, but if we are to go over to ES, which is the correlated pair, if you're unfamiliar with the indices market, these two are ones which mirror each other. We have this really convincing run above the previous week high or the previous day high. We have a close below this up close candle, which dug into that high. That is a change in state of delivery. So this signature here going into Tuesday and also looking back at NQ where we have an SMT. That is that significant price signature that I'd be looking for in order to take a trade prior to non-farm payroll. Again, this is a trade that I took and shared my executions on getting short within Tuesday's range and being on side for that large range expansion to the downside.
Now this trade here was framed with the logic of a classic expansion weekly profile where Monday makes a high and Tuesday makes a continuation. But that also builds the expectation that Wednesday could potentially trade lower. However, overnight we had an invalidation where we traded deep back into that range and didn't have any signature to get on side with the downside. So that's when we avoid the following day on Thursday and then the focus goes over to non-farm payroll on Friday. So as we go into Friday, just as on Tuesday, when I looked back on Monday's range to tell what this day should do, I'm going to look back at the whole week range to tell what Friday should do upon that news release at 830. So when I'm looking back at Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I can see that it actually remained internal in between this low and high, which formed during that expansion. So if we're internal within a daily range or what could be considered a consolidation, I'd be looking at this news release to manipulate that external high and then return right back into that range. Now in the scenario that this news release either fails to run this high or it trades lower or it simply consolidates, I would not be looking for any trade opportunities. This would be referencing the daily phases of price delivery. If we are in a consolidation or a daily range, I'm only interested in looking at the external high and external low for trade opportunities. So when I see that 830 news release run higher, I know that's serving as a manipulation and not a sign to get on side with a continuation to the upside because we know that we're in a daily range and the significant high impact news driver is going to be seeking external range manipulation. So when we run that high, I'd be looking for entry signatures to get on side with the downside. When you look intraday on this candle, there was an SMT with a lower time frame change in state of delivery, and that was a signature to get on side. Understanding the entire context of this week within the economic calendar and the daily phase of price delivery. Now we can get into the third and final example. And again, this is just the week following what we just went over Monday, March 11th to Friday, March 15th. So starting on the economic calendar, I want to first frame my expectations for potential opportunities throughout the week and what days will be offering the most likely to have large ranges. As I look through here, obviously CPI is a high impact news event and that's occurring on Tuesday. So we know that the most significant news event within this week is occurring on Tuesday. So that opens up opportunity to look for trades on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. With the understanding that the highest impact news event of the week is taking place on Tuesday, I know that the days following can have an expectation for potential trade opportunities because they are not waiting in anticipation for anything that's more significant. So they are less likely to be accumulated and more likely to have a large range if price is in agreement. The only other event here is this core PPI, which is medium impact. And while this is still a day I will trade before, potentially on Wednesday, I'm still not going to hold trades through this event as it's a medium impact news driver, but we'll be using this to add to the intraday narrative. So CPI, this is the focus on the weekly range because it is a high impact news event. So I really want to focus on this daily candle to add narrative. And then the rest are simply for intraday drivers of price. Now that I know that I'm interested in potential trade opportunities Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, with an extra emphasis on that Tuesday daily candle, I want to start considering the daily phases of price delivery. Referencing back to last week, we can see that run above that external high, which we just talked about, and we still have this external low, which is yet to run out, which is that draw on price. So when this week opens, I know that any run above that weekly opening price or any run higher is just considered a manipulation to eventually run lower and expand into this external low as that's the protocol for consolidations. So what we have here is an external range manipulation, an internal retracement, which does not need to return back to this high, and then an expansion down to this external low. Breaking this down to an hourly chart, we know that we don't trade Monday. And on Tuesday, when I look back at that range, it's consolidated. And then CPI, which is that high impact news event that I'm putting a lot of relevance on within the weekly range, when I see that run higher, considering that the draw is lower and this high should not be traded back to, I'm in the mindset that this is just a manipulation and I'm looking for a bearish weekly profile to align with in order to get on side with this downside move to get to those external lows. So going into Wednesday, I'd be looking for a bearish hourly change in state of delivery, considering how Monday and Tuesday printed in relation to the daily phase of price delivery. So when I see this close below this particular up close candle after sweeping previous day high, I want to then go look back and align this with the weekly profile. So we can see that Monday consolidated, 
Tuesday ran higher, Wednesday reversed, Thursday and Friday continuation because this is a midweek reversal, weekly profile. So following this change in state of delivery, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I'm looking for downside opportunities to get into that external low. And as usual, I shared execution for the cells at New York Open of each of these days, here, here, and here. Once this weekly profile is confirmed, I'm simply looking at bearish daily profiles for confirmations to get on side for my entries. Now that we've gone over those examples from the past three weeks, I think it's only fair to talk about what I will be doing for the upcoming week in framing the economic calendar from Monday, March 18th to Friday, March 22nd. Like I've been saying, I'm looking first for high impact news events. And if we look here on Wednesday, we have an FOMC press conference. And this is that event that I was talking about which occurs at 2.30 with that usual two o'clock FOMC statement prior to that. But this is the real event that we wanna be focused on. So with this event occurring on Wednesday at 2.30, anything prior to that release, I won't be trading. So I avoid price Monday, I avoid price on Tuesday, and I avoid price anytime before 2.30 on Wednesday. And I'm gonna put a lot of emphasis on how this news event enters the market and impacts the weekly range because it's telling me a lot about how Thursday and Friday should print on the chart. So just to wrap this all up, the one thing that I want you to take from this is that the higher time frames, the narrative of the weekly range, the daily phases of price delivery, the economic calendar, these are the things that are really driving price and are creating these, these large opportunities for you to capitalize on. And once you learn how to frame this consistently and find these large range days, you'll find that a lot of the aspects of trading become easier once you really start to trust this process. Because one thing I want to put into perspective is that a lot of people get confused on price signatures where maybe they are trading order blocks and they are struggling with it. They think that to learn more about it or to get better at order blocks, you need to know more about the actual thing. When in reality, an order block is just an opposing closed candle. What you really need to learn is to know when to apply it. When you have a market that is expanding, suddenly order blocks seem to work perfectly. And it's not that you knew more about it, you're just applying it at the right time. And that really goes for any PD array, any price signature on the lower time frame. This will really start to clear it up when you're trading on side with a move that is really aggressive and really wants to go large. And not only that, you may find that even if you have issues with holding trades or managing trades, this is going to also help with that in the sense that price is just running right to your objectives. That makes putting your profit targets easier. That makes managing your trades easier because you're not enduring large periods of drawdown. It also makes it less stressful because you're not in and out of these days which price doesn't want to go anywhere. It's just returning right back to the range and it's consolidated. That is mentally draining and you do not want that as a trader. So what you're going to find is there's a lot of things that come with this and it's a little bit more than simply understanding the chart it is making it easier to be a trader and to operate as a trader. So that's really why I chose this lesson because I think this is the most important aspect of building a system around this type of logic. And it doesn't have to be exactly the way I taught it. You can take bits and pieces of it or you can take it really in depth and learn how to get even more opportunity out of this learn how to do it even more accurately because that is there. It just takes time and it takes a little bit of experience, but it is possible and, and you can have that. And I think that this is the best place to get started with that type of process. So I really do hope you found this helpful and maybe this was the thing that opened your eyes to a new perspective on price. Maybe this gets you over the edge to becoming profitable. Maybe this gets you into trading itself or maybe it didn't resonate with you at all and that is totally fine. But I hope that if you took the time to watch this video, that you at least enjoyed and took something of value from it. Thank you, AM, for joining us today and sharing your process on how you blend the economic calendar, daily chart, and weekly profiles. If you want to learn more from AM, please check out the links in the description below to see his YouTube, Twitter, and his Instagram. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you guys later.